This was beautiful and lush. We planted this. It was just an experiment. And then uh, the drought started to kill it off. And I said, we'll just leave it standing for the deer. Man, they have just raped this place. Absolutely raped this place. They have eaten every single corn cob. Look at this. Every single corn cob. How they get this corn off these cobs is just amazing. So this is that cereal rye, and this is 50 pounds of it. This soil, even though we're in the middle of a drought, we're uh, coming up on eight weeks with one rainfall event with two tenths of an inch. <laughs> it's bad. Thank God for this irrigation in our pond back here. Morning. What are you doing, Doc? You know, I shot a bunch of footage the past couple days and I had nowhere to use it, so I figured I'd just put it together for you guys. I want to talk just real briefly about planting food plots and planting in general, but there's a couple things you need to think about, and that's going to be germination temperature and then frost resistance. You wonder why we have hundreds and hundreds of residential does on 40 acres. <laughs> this is why because I'm one of the only people all around here that actually plant for the wildlife. We manage this sort of as a preserve for the deer and for the turkey. Our total focus on 90% of this property is wildlife. Everything we do is for the deer and for the wildlife. Got a house down there and that's about it. The rest of it's for all. And we got a garden for ourselves, a big garden over here. But anytime we do something here, my thought process is, number one, how do we improve the soil? Number two, how can I make it better for the wildlife that lives here? And that's kind of my thought process. I'll talk to you about that. I'll talk to you about seed germination, what you can put out now, frost resistance, and why we don't harvest does. Someone had that question. Here we go. So first of all, let's take a look at this field. We have been through a horrible drought. It's finally ending. We finally had three days of light rain. But this field is alive because we're pumping 400 feet of water out of our pond up to our irrigation sprinkler. This. This is what you call biodiversity here. So I've got buckwheat. That's buckwheat right there. I've got white clover. I've got some form of either turnip or brassica in here. And I actually threw out a little bit of chicory seed on here. But that is just a feast. Now, I'll have a huge amount of deer in here, but last year I have a picture. I have one, two, three, four, five, eight point or better bucks, shoulder to shoulder, standing in this field. <laughs> crazy so we've got the house and the pond and behind that is an additional 20 acres of thick woods that's mainly if we do any hunting that's where we do it I don't hunt a whole lot when I get into a stand I really deer watch I saw over a thousand deer last year I saw over a hundred nice bucks and I took one because Ryan wanted some jerky and our processor down the road makes fabulous jerky um, I really when you when you get to the point where you actually own property and then you live on the property and you live with the wildlife, 
you sort of start to take ownership. Now, you don't own it. The state of Georgia owns the deer. I get it. But we take ownership of it. Uh, we have all the babies. We take care of the babies. We talk to the babies while we're out here gardening. All the girls that we have out here, um, I can just about name them. Some of them have scars. There's one three-legged doe out here. So we actually know. They're all residential. They live here. Not so much with the bucks. I'll explain that in a minute. So we don't harvest any does here. No one's allowed to harvest any of my does. But bucks, um, we have bachelor groups that come through here, especially in the spring, summer, and early fall. I mean, we'll have groups of four and five bucks that come through here. But once that rut kicks in, what are they looking for? Yeah, they're looking for food, but their number one priority during the rut is gonna be, they wanna breed does. So they're gonna go search for does. They will leave this property and they will go miles. But then at the same point, my neighbor's bucks that I haven't seen yet will come on my property and search my inventory, the does, checking to see which ones are in estrus. So for us, the more does, the better. My carrying capacity on this land, this is not Texas. This isn't a thousand acre ranch. This is lush, this is green, and it can support thousands of deer because of the huge water sources, all the plantings we do. I don't worry about a buck to doe ratio because of the traveling situation. You really should not get into a buck to doe ratio in deer management program if you have a small property. So if you have 10 to say 100 acres, do not start harvesting your does. The more does you have, the better. Now, if you have a large operation, you have a large property, it's a different story. Then you wanna work on your buck to doe ratio. You wanna look at the carrying capacity of your land, make sure that everything's in order. But for us, bring them on. I want as many does as possible because the number one attractant during the rut for bucks is gonna be does, period. Hands so down. let me take you up to this field over here. Let me show you this cornfield I did, it's pretty fun. Let me stop here. This is our high potassium field. This field was, you need to get a soil test by the way. This was extremely high on potassium, low on phosphorus. It's really hard to fix this. And it's hard to get anything to grow. And then we had a drought on top of that. So this field pretty much bummed out on us. So I came back in here. I put down 50 pounds of cereal rye. I've got clover in here. I've even got some chicory down here. And I've got everything I can possibly think of to try and make this stuff, you know, get in here and grow a little bit. I'm almost thinking about running a, a little disc, like an inch disc across this just to get that seed in. But I think I'm going to be okay. So the funny story is we planted this cornfield just on a whim, you know, just for the heck of it. It came up beautiful and then the drought moved in. All the corn browned out. It was all dry on the stock. And I said, well, we'll just leave it standing for the deer. I hadn't been up here in a couple of weeks. Every single cob of corn on this entire on this entire field was gone. I was shocked. <laughs> I had no, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. And so all we found was deer poo and chewed up, uh, chewed up cobs. So we're walking around and all we're finding is we're just finding a ton of deer poo. Look at this, poo, 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 poo. And then these chewed up cobs. There wasn't, I mean, there may have been about five or ten cobs of corn left in here, but everything, look at this, it's just deer poo and corn cobs, deer poo and corn cobs. <laughs> so I came up here yesterday, I made a decision, I got my DR Pro 44T toe behind cutter, <laughs> I don't know why I say it like that, but I got the DR uh, cutter out and I came out here, I ran over this twice. I cut it up, then I put out 50 pounds of cereal rye, I put out some clover, and I put out some chicory. I'll probably come back out here maybe with a little bit of kale. We do regenerative farming, which means we always want... There's a damn squirrel right next to me. I don't know what that was. It scared to death. It scared me to death. <laughs> what are you doing over here, man? <sighs> we do regenerative farming, which means you always want armor on the ground and roots in the ground. So. Let me give you a perfect example of how you make great soil. So we've got all this organic matter that we're, that we're chopped up and leave on the ground. We've got seed on the ground and I got poo. And there is a ton of poo in here. This soil is going to be really great next year. Really, really strong. So when you work with regenerative uh, farming or no-till, 
if you do something like this, if you cut it or kill it off, you immediately put roots back in the ground and you leave this on, the, you leave this, uh, all this crap on the soil. We might come in and do a strip till on this. I might run, I might put some, down some dirt booster and till it up and plant corn next year. But as far as overall full tilling, we don't do that. We leave the soil alone. That microbiology inside of the soil is what we want. We want it living. But man, the mice were in here when I was cutting this. <laughs> there were mice just running everywhere through here. I don't call them mice. They're actually hawk food. I have a lot of hawks here and they constantly come in here. I was wondering why the hawks were up in that tree the other day. That's why they're in here getting their mice. Okay, Doc, so what should I plant? So if you're going out and doing a late season planting, you're gonna think about your germination temperatures. There are several different types of varieties that you can actually have germination into the high 30s. Things like clovers, things like winter rye, winter oats, those kind of things. You can actually get those out and have good germination. I'm still pretty warm, I'm in a t-shirt and you know, we may get down to the 40s, the highs in the 60s, but my soil temperature is still gonna be probably in the good 50s. I'm actually putting out some chicory, which really wants it warmer. So it just depends on your area, but it's not just germination. It's gonna be what's gonna happen over the next 30, 60, 90 days. I'm gonna have frost move in. You may have a hard freeze move in. So you wanna look at and you wanna search, you wanna research, for your area, what's gonna be able to take that hard freeze if it comes in, or even a frost. Now, a lot of your broadleaf products, like uh, your turnips and brassicas, as soon as a freeze hits, they're gonna probably die out if it's a broadleaf. So you wanna look at something like a clover is my number one go-to. White Dutch clover, crimson clover, all of your clovers are great. Kale, they actually make a deer kale that the deer actually like. They don't love it, but they'll actually eat it and like it. So you can put some kale out. Again, low germination into the 30s, it'll germinate, but it'll come up and it's frost resistant. What else? Uh, cereal rye, winter cereal rye, winter oats, those type of things. That's what you wanna start thinking about right now. You wanna wait until you wanna look at your 10 day forecast and you wanna put it out right before that rain event, just like I did. It's still gray and cloudy out here, but fantastic three days of light rain is perfect. So again, germination temperatures, do your research on it, and then frost resistance. That's what you're gonna be thinking about this time of year. We have six different feed stations out here. We, we put corn, apple flavored corn inside of our feeders, but we go out three times a week and we put out a, a, a high quality supplement, which usually contains seeds, so roasted soybeans, um, protein pellets so we actually go out and we supplement that those feeders um, so we do a lot of a lot of management out here let me give you one example so we we did a land clearing project over here if you follow my channel you know about it this was all nasty woods this whole area we actually had the trees fully removed not just cut down root balls and all well when I came back what's some my what's some of my thought process healthy soil and take care of the deer and wildlife. So we have come back here and we're running irrigation over here and I've got all kinds of, uh, I've got annual rye. Look at, the, look at the turnip in here, isn't this crazy? I've got clover, I've got turnips, I got everything. This will, I'll have deer all in here, but we have a cabin coming in next week that's gonna be dropped right there, but 
when I'm doing this project, I'm thinking in my mind, okay, I want a good soil, but at the same time, this will feed the deer. I'll have deer right up, in the, right up against the house in here. It's pretty crazy. So anyways, guys, I just want to throw, I had this footage, I figured I'd throw it together. I got a bunch more videos coming out. Hit subscribe, and if you're going to be doing any planting, think about those two things. Doc.